Well, good morning, and uh, as I said, I had to be on main campus today, so I thought I would just record this lecture for you guys, and hopefully we can talk through some of the issues that you're going to see. Um, so the first part of the lecture that I wanted to do with you today is not the one with the notes, but you should have access to some images um, on screen, and so you should be able to see, uh, let's see if we can get this to work. Come on, where's my file? Move my mouse over here. Let's try that not working. There we go. Okay, so we're looking today and starting off uh, really getting into the cervical spine and to understand the cervical spine we really need to understand the anatomy and the, the movements, the biomechanics of the cervical spine so I thought that we'd first of all uh, do this by looking at some uh, straight x-rays just to see what's going on. So with the cervical spine we've got the body of the vertebrae as per usual for all of the vertebral um, segments and then we've got the spinous processes, okay, these long spinous processes coming back out through here, and then these little ones here are the transverse processes. All right, so it's much easier, of course, if it comes up with uh, all the annotations already on it, but most x-rays don't actually have this. Um, but I think it's easy in this, in this image to begin to see the shape of the facet joints, the angulation of the facet joints, because this angulation, as we're going to find out later on, actually determines the motion that's available at the facets. The other thing which is interesting whenever you look at the, uh, at the slides and look at, at the shape of the vertebrae is the position of the vertebral bodies here. The vertebral bodies are not just flat across, but they have this hollow, okay, this concavity that's here, particularly on the, the uh, inferior surface um, of the vertebrae. Um, if you look at the superior surfaces here, then they're much flatter, but then you've got this little concavity here, which gives this little pointed dip at the anterior aspect of the body of each vertebrae, uh, and that's something that we'll talk about later on. Looking from an anterior to posterior view, kind of a bit fuzzy really, isn't it? Um, pretty hard to see in some ways, um, but uh, you can just see the definition between the vertebral um, segments coming through here, and so you can see where the discs are going to be, and then we're looking right at the spinous processes in an end-on sort of positioning. The open mouth view, uh, there was some discussion in tutorial last week about this, whenever you're trying to, to uh, get a good uh, image of C0, C1, C2, then the best way to do it is to shoot with what they call an open mouth view, and it literally is that. The patient is positioned directly in front of the x-ray machine, and the, the tube is aimed through the mouth, so that, as you can see here, okay, this is the odontoid peg or the dens sticking up. And so if this is fractured, if there's a problem with this odontoid peg, this is the best view to be able to see this with. If you take an x-ray from the posterior aspect, then the vertebral body gets in the way. And so a lot of times with odontoid peg fractures, um, this will be uh, the view that you will see. All right, and you can also see in here all this white shininess here are fillings. So patient obviously didn't do too well with the whole teeth brushing thing. So just case in point, you're ever going to have it to get your neck x-rayed. You don't want anybody to see how many fillings you've got. All right, the oblique lateral view, not so much, a, not a straight side on view, not a, a anterior posterior, but looking laterally can sometimes give you a little bit more information. This is the view that we'll use much more in the lumbar spine to identify spondylolisthesis. But spondylolisthesis doesn't occur that commonly in the neck, and so not really a, a, a good view for us. doesn't really show us a whole lot of information. Um, and of course, the left side shows us about the same as the right side. Not a vast amount of information given. But again, you can begin to see the shape of the, of the facet joints and the position of those. You can see the foramen um, between each uh, vertebral segment where the spinal cord and the, and the, um, the nerve roots are going to come out of. And so again, something to be looking for on x-ray. So x-ray is pretty straightforward, pretty easy to see. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to move into the anatomy uh, of, the, uh, of the spine and move, look at the articulations of the spine uh, so that we understand what we're looking at when we get into the lab. Okay, 